Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to another one of our genetic videos. We are still working through our chapter nine, lecture nine series, and our topic for this video is the monohybrid cross. Monohybrid crosses are looking at the genetic inheritance of a single character. So character could be like hairline or hitchhiker's thumb versus straight thumb, or it could be flower color or seed color. Um, the key thing here is we're just looking at how one single trait is inherited. Now in order to do this type of analysis, we're going to be completing what are called Punnett squares. Many people do these at high school um, biology classes, so a lot of you are coming in already familiar. If you remember from meiosis, and we talked about this in the prior video, you are going to see um, that those each parent has two alleles of each of the genes that they can pass on to the offspring. And so since we only have two alleles that we can be passing on, we only have two style of gametes that we can make in terms of doing this analysis and thinking about our Punnett square. Since we're only looking at a single gene and not combinations of those, we can see that a heterozygous individual who is big A, little a, would be able to pass on either big A or little a to their offspring. And so we can simplify our Punnett squares by showing the two different types of eggs or the two different types of sperm in terms of just following a single gene. The middle boxes of your Punnett square represent your possible fertilized eggs. So when the sperm meets with the egg, what kind of a zygote might you see there? So let's do our P generation cross. P generation crosses by definition are true breeding crosses. So that means we are crossing a homozygous dominant times a homozygous recessive. We're gonna stick with what Mendel did in terms of looking at flower color of pea plants. So we're gonna have our purple um, plant is homozygous dominant and our white flower plant is homozygous recessive. Now I have used my letter A's here to represent my um, characteristic for flower color. I could be picking any letter. My training actually says, okay, if purple is dominant, let's use capital P for purple and lowercase p for white. Um, but I haven't done that here, I've used the letter A. So you can put either parent on the top or the side, it doesn't matter. So if my parent is homozygous dominant, they can either pass on a big A or a big A to their offspring. And if my parent is a homozygous recessive, they can either pass on a little A or a little A to the offspring. So then what I do is I put in my fertilized um, eggs, my possible zygotes. So I'm going to look at um, my first possible combination. Notice I wrote in my capital letter and then my lowercase letter. This is a good habit, a good um, kind of protocol to go with. This helps you read your Punnett square very easily. Then I'm gonna look at my next possible combination. Okay, see if you can finish up your bottom row on your notes. Pause it if you need to. Okay, and so I'm getting the same thing down below. And so because I have crossed a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive, I'm gonna get 100% purple plants. And we already know this from our prior discussion. We can describe our phenotype of our offspring, the physical expression as 100% purple and we can describe our genotype as 100% heterozygous or hybrid, so that's big A, little a. Okay, so let's do another monohybrid cross, but let's this time let's do our F1 generation. So we're gonna cross two individuals that are heterozygous. So again, each parent can pass on either a capital A, a dominant allele, or a recessive allele, lowercase a, in their gametes, so we can list those top and side. And then see if you can fill in your boxes without my help. So pause to give yourself time. Here's your first box, big A, big A. Okay, fill in the rest. How'd you do? Good job. All right, so now let's see if we can figure out our phenotypic and genotypic 
ratios or percentages. Phenotype, remember, is physical expression. So we should see three that are purple and one that's white. Three out of four or 75% of the offspring will have purple flowers. One out of four or 25% of the offspring will be white. Typically here, instead of representing these as percentages, 75%, 25%, we often see it listed as the ratio three to one. Now this is classic Mendelian ratio. When you're crossing two heterozygous individuals, you expect three to have the dominant form, one to have the recessive form. Okay, then do your genotypic ratio. That's looking at your allele combinations. So we should get a combination of one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, one homozygous recessive. This one to two to one ratio is also classic Mendelian ratio. Now these are ratios that you can memorize, or ratios that you can figure out every time using a Punnett square. So classic Mendelian ratio, this was the thing that was special about his findings and his application of statistics is when you're crossing two heterozygous individuals, you will get a phenotypic ratio of three dominant to one recessive and a genotypic ratio of one to two to one. One homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, and one homozygous recessive every time. Now what happens if you don't know the genotype of one of your individuals? So if you have the dominant form, there's no way to know automatically if it's homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So you can do what's called a test cross in order to figure out an unknown genotype. You cross your unknown by a homozygous recessive. So if we're still sticking with flower color, we're gonna cross our purple flower times our white flower. And there's two possible outcomes. If you have your unknown is homozygous dominant, then you will see every one of your offspring, 100%, having purple flower color. And you can see why in your Punna square. If instead your unknown purple flower is heterozygous, when you do your cross, you're gonna see 50% purple and 50% white. So test crosses are completed using a homozygous recessive with your unknown, and then looking at the outcome of your offspring, you're able to determine whether that original individual was a homozygous dominant or a heterozygous individual. Okay, that's it for now.